In this video, we're going to deploy a Google Cloud Platform Virtual Private Network, or VPC, with Terraform. Before we can begin, there are a few things we need installed on our system. One, we need Terraform, and two, we need the Google Cloud CLI. I'll leave a link in the description on how to download and install it. Once you have these installed, I'll go ahead and I'll run a Terraform version so you can see which version of Terraform I'm on. As you can see, I'm on Terraform version 1.3.7. You do not have to be on these versions for this video, but if you run into issues, it may be because you're watching this from the future on a newer version or you're on a version that is too old to support what we are doing in this video. I'll go ahead and I'll run gcloud version and this is the Google Cloud CLI that I've installed and I'll look to see which version of Google Cloud SDK I have and I see that I am running version 413.0.0 for this video. We also need to make sure that we have an existing project in Google Cloud that we would like to put our Terraform resources into. Go ahead and make sure you have a project that you would like to use for this video. I'll go ahead and create one and call it VPC Video. Now that we've got Terraform and the Google Cloud CLI installed and the project created in Google Cloud, we can go ahead and create our first file and I'll name this versions.tf. This is where I'll place any providers and their versions that I require Terraform to use and any properties for that provider. I'll head on over to the HashiCorp registry and I'll look for the Google Pl Cloud Platform Provider, the Google Provider. I'll go to this Use Provider button and I'll copy this configuration block. I'll take what I've just copied and I'll paste it into my versions.tf. And now I'm telling Terraform, please use these providers when I run Terraform init with these versions. Under the Google Provider, I'll remove this comment. I'm going to add three different attributes. First, credentials, and I'll leave it blank for now. Project, and I'll leave that blank for now. And region, and region I will fill in now as US Central 1. Before I go any further with writing my Terraform code, I'm going to go ahead and use the gcloud CLI tool to authenticate to Google Cloud and generate a credentials file. I'll go ahead and I'll run gcloud auth application default login. This will prompt me with a link, which I'll click and follow. It'll open a web page in my web browser and tell me to choose a Google account to log in with. I'll go ahead and click it. I'll click allow, and then it will provide me with a code to copy. I'll go ahead and copy that code, and I'll go and paste that code into my terminal. We can see that the Google CLI has returned a credentials file location, and I'll copy that. I'll go up here to my credentials attribute, and I'll type file, parentheses, quotations, and paste that in there. And this is how we'll tell Terraform how to authenticate with Google Cloud. Next, I'll run gcloud projects list, and this will output all the projects under my account that I've just logged in with. And I can see I have a VPC video account under project ID. I'll go ahead and I'll copy the project ID that I want to use for this video, and I'll go ahead and paste it under the project. Now, I've told the Google provider how to authenticate to Google Cloud with my account and which project I'll be using and which region I'll be using to deploy my resources with Terraform. Go ahead and run gcloud config set project and provide the project ID that you would like to set. This needs to be done because when we run gcloud enable services to enable the API, if we're not on the correct project, we'll enable the API on the wrong project. And when we go to run Terraform apply, we'll get an error. One more thing we need to do before we can begin is enable APIs. In GCP, we have the concept of APIs, which are disabled by default for some services. Therefore, if we attempt to access those services with Terraform and those APIs are disabled on our project, we will not be able to access that project. There are two ways we can enable APIs within GCP. The first is through the UI, and if we search for the API library, we'll see a tab come up for API library. If we search for the API in question, and for our case, we'll be enabling the Compute Engine 8 API, we'll see it comes up, and all we need to do is click the Enable button, and then wait a few minutes for the API to be enabled on our project. The second way we can enable APIs is if we've already authenticated with the gcloud CLI, we can go ahead and run gcloud services enabled, and then the name of the API we would like to enable. And this will take a few minutes to run, and a few more minutes to propagate to your account, but once it's finished, you'll be able to use the services that you're attempting to access. And once it's complete through the CLI, you'll see this output here, finished successfully. Now that we have successfully authenticated to the Google Cloud platform and enabled the Compute Engine API and versions.tf is complete, we're ready to create a new file named vpc.tf 
and get our VPC resources for our VPC and our subnets. Go back to the documentation for the Google provider and search for a resource called compute underscore network. Click on Google Compute Network and look at the second example called Network Custom MTU. Copy that example and head back over to vpc.tf and paste that example in. Go ahead and change the project to the ID of the project we'll be using. If I go back to versions.tf, I can see the project ID that I copied earlier. I'll go ahead and I'll paste that into the project attribute. Name the VPC whatever you want. Change the attribute auto create subnetworks to false because we'll be creating them ourselves and remove the attribute MTU because we do not need it for this video. Head back over to the documentation for the Google provider and click on the Google compute subnetwork resource. Look at the first example, subnetwork basic and copy the first resource called Google compute subnetwork. Head back to vpc.tf and paste that example. Go ahead and change the name if you would like, the site or range, and the region. The region can match the region in your versions.tf, but it can be a different region if you so choose. Go ahead and change the attributes, such as the name, the site or range, and then go ahead and delete the secondary IP range attribute as it is not required for this video. Before we can go any further, we can see that the network attribute is referencing a non-existing VP network resource because this has the name custom test, but the network resource we're creating has the name VPC network. I'll go ahead and correct this by changing the name of this resource to VPC network. And now we can see that it's turned blue because it's a valid reference to a valid resource up here. Go ahead and add an additional attribute called project. And this will be the project ID that we want to put this subnet in. I want to make a note that the attributes project here in our network and the attributes project here in our subnetwork and the attribute region are optional attributes for these resources. If we define them here, they can be different from the ones in versions.tf, but if we don't define them here, then whatever we define in versions.tf will be used for those attributes. Now that we've finished writing our Terraform code and we've authenticated to the Google Cloud Platform, set the project we would like to use, enable our Compute Engine API on that project, we're ready to run Terraform init to initialize Terraform and download our providers. Next, run Terraform plan. If everything looks good, run Terraform apply. If it looks good, accept. Once your apply is complete, head on over to the Google Cloud UI on your project and search for VPC network and ensure that your VPC has been created. Mine has, and you can see that I have a test sub network that we created as well.